Sailfish are actually one of the more common members of the billfish family. Um, they're also more coastal in nature than a lot of the other species, which are typically found pretty far offshore. In contrast, sailfish are regularly found within several miles or sometimes you know, less than a mile from shore. They're found in the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans, anywhere where you have uh, fairly warm water, so this is a temperate or uh, tropical fish. And they're pretty easy to identify. Like all billfish, uh, sailfish possess an extension of the upper jawbone to form a bill. And this is not only used for hunting, but it also makes the fish really hydrodynamic as well and, and a very fast swimmer. They're easily identified or distinguished from other species of billfish by the fact that they have a very tall first dorsal fin. The problem is they don't always keep that up when they're swimming. Unless they're corralling bait when they have that up, oftentimes they'll swim with the dorsal fin depressed and aggrieved, which allows them to swim very fast. But when this is happening, you can still identify them fairly well because they have by far the largest pelvic fins of, of all the billfish. It's a fish that's built for speed. It's got a very large forked tail, and most of the fins can fit into grooves near the body, which allow it to be very, very hydrodynamic. Unlike other species of billfish, which are for the most part solitary, a sailfish may often be found hunting in large schools particularly when they're in the presence of large schools of bait. In that type of situation, you'll see them hunting where one fish will go through the school and slash at the bait and pick off a few fish while the other fish circle the bait ball with their large dorsal fins erect and the pelvic fins in a down position to make the, the fish look bigger than they actually are and, and keep the, the bait in a very compressed small body. Unlike um, some other fish, sailfish don't really exhibit any type of sexual dimorphism. That is, you really can't tell males from females. But in general, females tend to be larger than the males. In the Atlantic, sailfish will average 20 to 40 pounds. The all tackle record is 141 pounds. They get much, much bigger in the Pacific. Even though they're the same species, they reach weights of over 200 pounds in the IGFA all tackle record is uh, 221 pounds. They're very fecund fish in that, in that they, they spawn large numbers of eggs. Uh, for example, a 70 pound female may shed somewhere around 4.8 million eggs in multiple batches during the course of the spawning season. Fish will adjust their color based on a variety of stimuli. If they're fatigued, if they're, if they're excited about something, and in the case of sailfish, you'll see them light up, that's what anglers will say, around the presence of bait. Uh, sometimes get very, very dark, depending on the situation, but they have these chromatophores in their body which allow them to alter their, their coloration and, and pattern. And they'll do that under a variety of stimuli. If they're tired, they may brown out and get very dull in color. If they're really lit up on a bait, they may get very bright. Or sometimes when they're in the, the presence of schools of bait, you may have groups of fish that are, are fairly dark in color. Sailfish, like most other billfish, I think will eat what's ever locally abundant. And that can be anything from crustaceans like shrimp, maybe even small pelagic crabs, but especially squid and, and a lot of the bait fish that you'll see inshore and near shore. They're, um, they're, they're big time piscivores, so they're definitely eating uh, other species of fish. They're a smaller billet fish compared to some of the bigger marlins, so they're not going to be going after, for example, some of the, the medium to large size yellowfin tuna like you will see with very big uh, black and blue marlin. So they'll focus more on uh, some of the smaller species. We actually have data in South Florida looking at the number of sailfish that have been retained versus released, and it's a pretty dramatic thing that we've seen over the last several decades in that the number of fish that are retained has gone down absolutely dramatically, which shows that there's a very high catch and release ethic with anglers here in South Florida. And I think indeed in other parts of the world as well. But at the same time, I think anglers were also figuring out that some of these fish were dying as a result of hook mortality, a lot of internal bleeding, external bleeding. So a decade or so ago, there was a big movement that really had a, a groundswell in Central America and also here in South Florida to convert anglers from using J hooks to circle hooks. And circle hooks have several big advantages. For the fish, it almost always tends to hook the fish in the corner of the jaw where there's very, very little bleeding. It has a very low tendency to hook the fish somewhere back in the throat or in the esophagus. So it's good for the fish in that it's gonna catch it somewhere where it won't bleed or do damage to external organs. But at the same time, it has a very good benefit for anglers that know how to use it. Catch rates and hooking efficiency goes way up when you use circle hooks because they catch fish in the corner of the jaw. So once fish are hooked, they most often stay on the hook and allow anglers to rack up very high catches.
Like other species of billfish, um, sailfish are, are highly migratory. They move around quite a bit and it's in response to surface temperatures and bait aggregation. So during the summertime or warm periods, you'll find them migrating further up the coast into higher latitudes in the northern hemisphere where they'll take advantage of warmer weather and, and bait. But once surface temperatures start to cool, they'll come back down and move further south and that's where anglers in South Florida really take advantage of sailfish. You can really catch them year round here in South Florida in the Keys, but um, in the fall and winter where you get these fish moving back down in response to cold weather and fronts, you can really get high concentrations of sailfish and that's really when the, the good fishing takes place.